Hey, it's Miss Hunt again. Today is April the 15th, and some people may or may not know the significance of this day, but it is actually a, a day that people remember Jackie Robinson. Uh, Jackie Robinson was the first African American to be able to play in a major league sport. I teach uh, second grade, and one of the domains that we have is a fighting for the cause domain. And one of the lessons we talk about is Jackie Robinson. So I want to read just a little excerpt from the uh, lesson that I teach my kids. And it says, on April the 15th, 1947, when Jackie put on the Brooklyn Dodgers uniform wearing the number 42, he broke the color barrier. As the first African-American player on a major league team, Jackie made his debut at Ebbets Field before a crowd of 26,623 people, including more than 14,000 African-American fans. And at the very end, it says Jackie Robinson was the first African-American inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. He received many other honors, too. In 1997, Major League Baseball honored Jackie by retiring his number from all Major League Baseball teams. This is a very special honor, and it means that no other Major League team player on any team can ever wear his number. Every year since 2004, however, all Major League players wear Jackie's number, 42, every April 15th to remember the important role that Jackie Robinson played in Major League Baseball. And I know right now times are a little crazy and there are no sports going on, but if there were, I can guarantee you if you watched a baseball uh, game that every player on that team would be wearing the number 42 on this day, April the 15th. Um, I want to read a little story to you guys. It's called Luke Goes to Bat. And you may hear Jackie Robinson in the story. It was Brooklyn, it was summer, it was baseball. All day long, the kids on Bedford Avenue played stickball in the streets. Except for Luke. When you're older, his brother Nikki told him, you're just a squirt. One of the older kid, other kids said, laughing. So Luke watched the games from the curb, and then he practiced. He threw a ball against the wall next to the deli. He practiced his swing over and over again. He ran as fast as he could up and down the block. He wanted to be ready when it was his time. And at night, whenever the Dodgers were playing, Luke hurried up to the roof where he could see the lights of Ebbets Field. When he heard the crowd go wild, he imagined his favorite player, Jackie Robinson, had hit a home run. Someday, Luke thought, I will hit a home run too. Finally, one morning, the team was short a player. Frankie had to go to his aunt's. Who are we going to get? Hey, said Luke, what about me? Everyone was quiet. Ah, oh, come on, said his brother, give him a chance. We got nobody else. Better not mess this up. They put him in left field. No balls came his way, so he just stood there. When it was his turn to bat, Luke took a few practice swings and he stepped up to the plate. I'll show you. Luke muttered. The ball whizzed past. Strike one. Luke held the bat tighter. Strike two. Luke was barely in position when the next ball flew by and the catcher yelled, out. You stink, Luke heard. He got up to bat one more time but struck out again. Sometimes it just goes that way, his brother told him. Frankie came back in the afternoon, so Luke spent the rest of the day on the curb. He was sure they never asked him to play again. Grandma was in the kitchen when he got home. I finally got a chance to play with the team, Luke told her. Grandma could tell that the game hadn't gone well. Not everyone plays like Jackie Robinson all the time, she said. Not even Jackie Robinson. Luke didn't smile. By the way, Grandma said, are you doing anything tomorrow night? Luke shrugged. Well, if you're so busy, someone else will have to go with me to the game at Ebbets Field. What? You mean a real game? Grandma held up two tickets.
Ebbets Field was ablaze with lights, but this time Luke didn't have to imagine the game. Thanks for taking me, Grandma, he said. They watched the Dodgers and the Phillies battle it out. The game went into extra innings. By the time the Dodgers got up to bat in the bottom of the 14th inning, the score was tied 8-8 eight to eight with two outs. Jackie Robinson was up. The crowd roared, Come on, Jackie, Luke yelled. The pitcher threw a curveball. Jackie swung. Strike one, the umpire called. The pitcher wound up. He threw a fastball and Jackie missed. Strike two. Three balls followed. All eyes at Ebbets Field rested on Jackie. The Dodgers could still win. Luke shouted with the crowd, Give it to him, Jackie! You show him! Jackie looked around from under his cap, then dug his feet into the dirt. The pitcher began his wind-up. You can do it, Jackie, Luke whispered. You can do it. Suddenly, Luke heard the loud crack of a bat. When he looked up, the ball was flying over his head, flying over the scoreboard, flying over the walls of Ebbets Field. The crowd went wild. Luke stood up on his seat and cheered, You showed him, Jackie! What a game, Grandma said. See, you can't give up. Even Jackie Robinson got to keep trying. Luke didn't answer. When Luke got home, he ran up to the roof. The lights were going out at Ebbets Field. Come on down. It's bedtime, Nikki called. Just then, Luke saw a ball lying on the ground. Look, he said, picking it up. This is the home run ball that Jackie Robinson hit tonight. Nah, that's just some old ball a kid hit up on the roof, Nick said, laughing as he went downstairs. And that's when Luke saw him. It was Jackie Robinson himself. Hit that one for you, kid. Before Luke could say a word, Jackie ran to the dugout to join the other Dodgers. But he looked back one more time. Hey, kid, he said. Your grandma was right. You can't give up. Thanks, Mr. Robinson. The final lights went out at Ebbets Field. Luke looked down at the winning ball and smiled. I won't, he whispered to himself. And he did. I like that story because it, it lets us know that we don't ever need to give up on anything that we're trying to accomplish. Hope y'all have a great day.